Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Sheriff Jackson, would you join us for a few minutes, please? Hey, Keith. When you're done speaking, I'll turn you off here so you don't have to keep looking at this button. Well, thank you all for uh, coming tonight. I am uh, I'm Rob Jackson, I'm the sheriff. I have been the sheriff for three years and nine months. It's been a, a kind of a wild ride, um, if you any knowledge of what we do. We, uh, probably one of our greatest uh, greatest accomplishments on the county commissioners can pat themselves on the back for, for us doing this is passing referendum 1A and all you people that uh, voted for that. Um, and it allowed us to build uh, an $8 million uh, addition to our jail and a new courthouse. Unfortunately, they both became active within the same week, and it's been, um, been tough to populate my new jail and to deal with this 45,000 foot square, square foot uh, courthouse at the same time. So statutorily, I am required to provide courthouse security. And that's all grant funded, and so we're, we're good there. But we are, um, tomorrow we will populate our new jail. And uh, at the beginning of that, uh, we will also start renovating our old jail. So, um, so since I'm on the post, I won't take a lot of your time here. But um, I go to the sheriff's conferences all the time. And I'm in a kind of a unique position because um, I work well with my county commissioners. A lot of sheriffs and county commissioners don't see eye to eye. Unfortunately, this is a bad time of the year because it's budget year, the budget time of the year. So, and that's our biggest challenge. Other than the opioid crisis that we are dealing with um, daily in our jail. And, you know, if you haven't been exposed to that, it is. You know, it's mind-boggling what it's doing to our community. So that's one of our, our biggest challenges uh, to deal with that. Um, and, you know, we really do need a rehab um, center here. But once we get, um, you know, past this budget time and we get things lined up, I think things will be a lot better. But our jail numbers, I'm, I'm happy to announce, are way down. We don't know why that is. But um, we can probably give credit to the LEAD program, to of the courts and things like that. So some innovative approaches to dealing with our, um, our drug, drug addicted community. Not all of them need to be in our jail. Uh, they are, um, really don't have a place there. So anyway, um, it's been a lot of fun ride and uh, thank you for your, for your support. Uh, Leslie Salazar around? Yeah, this is he. Hey, Leslie, my name's Jonathan Masters. You don't know me, but I am a Conejos County citizen, and I'm going to be voting uh, in this election. And you're running for coroner, and I want to uh, see what you're all about. Oh, you're Conejos County? Yeah, I'm, uh, basically what's, what the deal is, I believe everybody should be treated the same. Good start. Good beginning. The golden rule. I was a I was a coroner before. You believe in the golden rule? What's the golden rule? The you do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Yes, right. A good deal. So, um, yeah, go on. Just uh, talk a little bit about yourself. What's your what you want to do? What's your plans? You said you've been a coroner before, so you know how to do the job. I I know I've been the coroner before, and the problem. With the corner we have now, is he worked for me, huh? And I let him go. Oh, I let him. I let him go once because he was uh, his. There were a couple of things he would. He just sort of sneak by me, 
so I wouldn't know what was going on. He played favorites for his friends, you know, like no autopsies and huh. stuff like that. And uh-huh. I didn't like it. You know, I had rules. Sure. And he didn't go by my rules. So I, I'm i just against the way he does it. What's, uh, what, then, what are your rules? Well, I have the rules that, like, if it's family member. Yeah. Say, say uh, if you were my deputy... One of your family members yeah. passed away. All right, you couldn't handle you couldn't handle the case. I would recuse myself because I would be biased. Yes, so that's well, that was one of my rules, and he wasn't he didn't see it that way. So, and you know, I had some of my best friends, and I show up out to the scene, and I turn around and call my deputy because I couldn't, I would not take the case because they were some of my best friends. Good deal. I want to be separate. So you're a man of integrity. Yes, I believe so. I hope so. <laughs> well, I, I think the so. fact that the fact that you have principles, and you know, I mean, we may fail to live up to our own principles. I I feel like there's a lot of people out here that have no principles. Yeah, and I I just don't feel the guy that's in office is doing it for the community. You know, it's he was uh well. For example, I have people still asking me, how do I get an autopsy report? This guy hasn't sent me an autopsy report. Right. And he just won't send them out. You know, he'd send them and won't send them out. He does the autopsy, but he doesn't send them out. Another thing he would do is send bodies up for autopsy and not uh, any information on it. Huh. Why, so, do you, why do you think he's like that? Do you feel like he's covering up people's crimes, or do you feel like he's just sloppy and lazy, or what? He, he just, he's just lazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, just, I'm sorry, but he's just lazy. That's better than a, a sinister thing, because it could be if, I mean, my I guess my interest, what I understand, and it's probably true, it's true in Kentucky, it's probably true here, the coroner can arrest a sheriff if they believe the sheriff had something to do with a, a death. So the coroner is all about the death, you know, that somebody dying and taking care of the, the who died, cause of death, and the rest of that. So in the course of that duty, if the sheriff somehow is implicated in it, the coroner can arrest a sheriff. So I want a coroner that's willing to arrest, you know, possibly arrest a sheriff if, you know, said sheriff is, uh, you know, could have uh, killed somebody uh, in cold blood. Yeah, that's. I believe that, you know, I'm that way. The coroner's the only one that can serve the sheriff, too. Coroner or the sher- or the postmaster. I've, I, the only ones. I got a different theory on it. The executive branch has to control the executive functions of the county, so I would actually argue that the uh, commissioners have uh, arrest powers, but uh, tr- traditionally everybody agrees that the police definitely have it, so um, they could arrest each other, right? That's possible, and then uh, the attorney general and then the judges could issue a warrant. But, yes. um, yeah. Well, that's, uh, yeah. They, they usually go through, because I, I have served the sheriff. Before. <laughs> nice, okay. <laughs> I, you know, if it's just serving, I mean, a subpoena, like, I welcome a subpoena. Let's, let's have fun in court. Let's see what this is about. <laughs> so I'm not, I don't know. I feel like I'm a good dude. So if someone's accused me of something, I want to, I want to find out what this is about. This is crazy. Yeah. It's, it's just, you know, I just have different beliefs and I'm very strong about my beliefs. How long you were know, you I, a coroner? I was there for 16 years. Oh, wow. So you have tons of experience. How long has this coroner been in office? He's been in office for eight now. Are you you Republican or Democrat and he's the other? I'm a Democrat. I'm a a Democrat. He's the Republican? What's that? And he's the the Republican? Yes, he's a Republican. So can I ask you this? What do you... I don't... Well... In public office and local, I don't... uh, I believe in Democrat, Republican. I believe in in people. <laughs> good, like character, good and bad. Yes, that's the way I feel. No, I, t- I don't believe just because you're a Democrat, you're going to be the best choice on the line. Or well, you're a Republican, you're the I- best choice on the line. 
I, I'll be honest, I actually tend towards the Democrats because uh, at least there's a chance that they care. And so that's sort of my uh, breakdown. But ultimately, I love the word progressive so much that it, I can't, uh, there's not many arguments against moving forward to progress, to, you know, make things better. So progressive, there's progressive Republicans, there's progressive Democrats. I don't know anybody that argues to be a regressive let's let's go backwards <laughs> let's let's you know go down i don't so i feel like um that's my uh, sort of litmus test for folks not republican or democrat but progressive if uh, people want yeah. to move forward progress let's you know make the even you can always um clean your house up you know make it more efficient you can always make things better so i just yeah i mean Love it or leave it. I I love it, and I that's why I'm gonna take care of it and clean my house. So that's yeah. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for letting that's me that's express all that. That's the way I feel about it. So. No, that's cool. Yeah. Um. So so uh, how's the campaign been going? You think uh, you've been getting a lot of support? Is, you think it's up in the air? And do, would you trust the results? You never. You never can. You never. In my in my area, you never can tell. If you're going to get, it's basically the Republicans over here are basically all Mormons, and the Democrats are everything else. Huh. And the Mormons, I've had people people tell me, you know, they're Mormons, and they're just going to vote for him because he's a Republican. So hmm. you never tell. That's unfortunate because I I grew up Catholic and I feel like every group every group Mormons Catholics Black White old young you're gonna have good and bad so really I feel like those are just superficial labels. That that's the way it is. That's the way I feel. Comes down to character. That, you know I, I've seen it. I see it over there. If you if you go to Cornelius County, you'll see that. I'm in Magote. I'm in Magote Meadows in the RV park right now. I'm building a house over in uh, Castillo County, um, in the right next to the Lobatos Lobato Bridge. Uh huh. So that's yeah. I'm I'm here, you know. So I'm actually right in front of the oldest church in Canejos, right in the capital. So just kind of sitting in the parking lot, just kind of. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I served as an altar boy there for years. <laughs> I grew up Catholic, and you know what? I, I people a lot of people down the Catholics and I feel like I don't know some some of it's legitimate. I was happy that I went to Sunday school because in public education they never asked me what was good and what was bad. They never even introduced morality or any of these sort of life and death questions. And I don't always agree with the Catholic Church, but I'm glad they actually made me think about what's good and what's bad because I, I really I mean I really care about my morality i think like goodness that's i don't know i'm uh, i'm going to choose goodness i'm going to be goodness i'm going to do goodness to the day i die so if uh, the catholic church hadn't talked to me when i was young then i might not have uh, you know kind of questioned some of the things that's you know and yeah. the pope the pope i don't know if you what you think about this pope but he's awesome i love them i'm loving this pope you know i, I used to be a cop back in the 70s and 80s and I had friends that were alcoholics, some friends that were alcoholics, and I used to help talk to them, try to help them get out of the drinking. Yeah. And I had one, one in particular, he was Catholic, but he quit drinking, but he changed religion. And yeah. when he changed religion, he came back at me, and he kept trying to force the other religion on me. Wow. And I looked at him, and I, and I said, you know, I'm going to tell you something right now. I said, uh, as you get along in this, in this in this church, it's like any other church. You're gonna find good things about it. You're gonna find bad things about it. Right. You take the good things about it, and you make yourself better. Don't try to force nothing on nobody. And nobody will try to force anything on you. I don't try to tell you. You know, I said I don't try to push my the Catholic Church back on you. It's the other argument, if you want to go to any other religion. Right. But in time, if you're there, you're going to find that that's not everything. Uh, a rose garden. He looks up. Uh, I ran into him a little later, a few years later. I understand what you're talking about now. There's some things I don't agree with. I said, you're going to find that with everything. You're going to find that with, with everything. You're going to find that in politics. You're going to find that in 
school, you're going to find that wherever you go. But you get what you can out of it to make yourself better. And that's all that matters. I, I think so. The I'm not, uh, just full disclosure. I'm I'm not a believer anymore. I believe in goodness. I believe in humanity. I believe in love. But um, uh, I think that ultimately, what you have to do is you got to weigh what's good and what's bad. And if the the bad outweighs the good, then you do got to leave it behind. But uh, you can't the I guess humanity. I can't leave the community behind. I can't leave humanity behind. So I don't know. I guess I see it both ways. Yeah. So that's that's the way I find. It. No, I appreciate. I mean, you've been actually pretty thoughtful, and uh, you have morals and principles. So that's uh, that had to come from someplace. So uh, Christianity. I like the golden rule. I, I really. The, it just it's logical to me. I don't want to be hit. I don't want you to murder me. I don't want you to rape me. I don't want you to steal from me. And that therefore, I won't do those things to you. And I'm actually I'm kind of disillusioned with my society because when a police officer does shoot somebody. The, it gets buried in the grand. We don't even put them up for trial, so it's almost like they're get allowed to get away with murder. And um, I feel like murder is wrong. That's the worst crime out here. And if we're letting one group of people always get away with the biggest, you know, evil out here, then uh, that means it opens up a Pandora's box of every, you know, anything else that's lesser than that. Uh, well, I'll, I'll give you a thing. I was involved in a real bad case. Uh, or a cop shot and killed the guy. Oh, wow. And by the end of it, the guy, the cop, actually was on the death fight. But by the end of it, the guy lost his job because I came down on him so hard. Because there were things I didn't agree with, but he did. Right. You know, I, re- I really cost him his job. I said, you were not, you were not trained to be a domestic, to go in the domestic violence cases. Yeah. And you went in there when you were told not to go in there. You were told to wait. Yeah. So he went in there when he wasn't supposed to go in there. And shot the guy? I, and, well, the guy shot at him. Oh, I got you. The guy shot at him first. But I cost him his career. There is that, do you hear about that case? He yeah, go ahead, sorry. He thought he could do things his way, you know, just because he had a bat. Right. And I, I told him, I says, you know, I used to be a cop. Hmm. I was a cop there for, in that town of Antigua for 14 years. Well. You know where the pistol I carried? It was under the seat of my car. <laughs> You're like I Andy Griffith? Before. You know, and I went against people with guns, and, and I talked to them. Yeah. I, I talk him out of it. That's awesome, man. Actually, that's amazing. Because rarely, I feel like, rarely do I hear about, whenever I hear about, you know, a cop shooting somebody, and even, like, let's assume the best. And, you know, I, I hope for the best, ex, you know, prepare for the worst. But let's assume the cop, in the course of their duties, was defending, the you know, the, a citizen and self-defense, had to do it, shot a person, and now now they're dead. I like the criminal justice system. If the idea is that we're looking for justice and we're looking for what's right and what's wrong, well, let's, you know, charge him with first-degree murder and then put him in front of a jury and then get him to explain himself about what he did. I think that we're actually such a forgiving people that even if he made a mistake and maybe overstepped his bounds, maybe a suspension or a little light punishment, but I don't think it would be that bad. But if they, you know, did what they were supposed to do, then we could celebrate this person as a hero. They get a clean bill of health. Twelve jurors, twelve individual citizens looked at the case, validated it, instead of just the DA and then, you know, the DA burying it and then it going nowhere at all. That's just one person versus twelve, one elite versus twelve citizens. Yeah, well, on this case that I did, that, that's part of the reason I lost my job. Because I came down on this this cop so hard. Really? And the DA lost, yeah, and the DA lost his job, too. He didn't get reelected on that same one. Well, I, wouldn't, I would love that. As a voter, as a citizen, I would love that you're keeping... Because the three branches of government, we we assume that... You know, uh, people can do bad things, so we have to check each other. And if we're not checking the police, then that means nobody is. Right. And, I, you know, I came down, I checked everybody. Nothing went by me. Good. I came down, I came down on one of the sheriffs. He 
because he thought he could do things on his own. He didn't need the coroner. <laughs> I threatened to lock him up. I had the state patrol show up to his office, to his house, to, to, threaten to arrest him when he went through it on a homicide case. Man, you sound like an awesome corner. I feel like I'm just, I guess, thinking about if uh, I had an untimely demise and they try to say it was like suicide. You know, <laughs> Leslie, you know, Jonathan Masters it, it loves his life. He never tried. He would not. So that's a setup. That there's a, it's a murder. So investigate. Autopsy. Ask questions. Take all my electronic records. Find out who did it. Avenge me. Don't let someone just murder me and not, you know, uh, find out who the hell the person was. I believe that everybody, I don't care if you're rich, I don't care if you're the first person or if you lived on the street. No. I don't care. Everybody has a right to it. Right. To the best full process, to due diligence, the, the entire works. I think so. So, uh, I'd like to talk to you a little more. I'm in Albuquerque right now. Right now I'm in Santa Fe. I'm on the way to Albuquerque. Give me a call anytime. You got my number now, and uh, if you don't mind, I would like to give you a call from time to time, yeah, too. Yeah, we can stop and have a cup of coffee someplace. Talk it, if you like. I'd like to meet you. Anytime. You seem like an awesome guy to talk to. Thank you. You, and too. I, and I'd like you to meet me, so, and understand where I'm from. I'm in, uh, how far are you away? I'm in Magote, so right by Antonito. I'm, I'm in uh, Santa Fe right now, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Oh. I brought my wife up. It's her birthday. Oh, I gotcha. Oh, then you, you, you set it up. You, you set it up. I'm pretty wide open. I'm just trying to build that house and get a septic system over there so and survive and find a job. So really, uh, my schedule's kind of wide open. So whenever you want. Okay. I'll give you a call. All right, Mr. Okay. Salazar. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good one. Thank you. Bye. He's a good man, good guy. I think you should vote for Leslie Salazar. I think you should vote for the Democrat commissioner. I think you should vote for the uh, Cordova, Steve Cordova, and the Democrat coroner, and just the Mormons. We're just going to go along with the damn Mormons. <laughs> There's all this Catholic paraphernalia around here. We're just going to go along with the Mormons. The Mormons, Joseph Smith buried fucking tablets and shit. Crazy-ass Mormons have 30 wives. Crazy-ass Mormons. So they're brainwashed and don't believe in reality. They believe in science. <laughs> uh, you know, so what? Uh, what's next? What am I doing now? I tried to call the other guy. He's uh, the number we went to. Um, it said it was disconnected. So I think that was his campaign number. I'm sure he's got an office number. Talk to him. He basically painted up a very dramatic picture of how he is not corrupt, how he's a good man. The other person is lazy. He's not saying that the other man's corrupt, but corruptible and does questionable stuff. So it seems to be uh, virgin on corruption, given the, you know, laziness. Uh, that's uh, what it, negligence. Negligence, you know, you get you get sued for negligence. So being lazy, that's not a good um, label. And, uh, and, yeah, I guess that's it. So that's Leslie Salazar run for coroner of Conejos County, 2018. Hello. Yeah, hello. Is, um, uh, you called me. I, have, I called a couple candidates. Are you running for office? Yes, sir. This is Steve. Steve. Steve Lacero? Oh, yeah, 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 out of Conejos, okay. I'm called Richard Martin, the corner. I've tried calling the campaign number, and it was just a dead number. So, mobile. Yeah, Richard Martin? Yep. My name's Jonathan Masters. How are you doing today? I'm good. That's good to hear. Okay, so I am originally born in Kentucky, been in Pueblo for about two years. I'm now in Conejos County, and 
you're running for coroner, so I have uh, three different elections and uh, tax issue to vote on. Okay. And so I was wondering what, uh, why, why should I vote for you? What's the stuff are you made up of? Well, I'm not exactly sure what, what you're, what you're after, but are uh, you asking me what my background is or what? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, what, essentially. What I know or what I do or... It, all the above. Anything you're wanting to tell me. I don't know you from Adam. I don't know you from the other person. So I'm just trying to get a general sense of who I should vote for. Okay. I, I uh, worked on the ambulance and I'm still employed by the ambulance. But I'm not working at this point because I've got to have some back surgery done. Okay. So I worked for the ambulance for 40 years. Oh, wow. I was the assistant administrator. And, oh, I don't have any idea how many ambulance calls I've been on, but several thousand. Anyway, um, then I worked for the city of Manassa for about 23 years doing water and wastewater. And so back to the, to the medical side of it, I've been to very many uh, autopsies and things like that and different training and I, I of course keep up on my training every year we have to go for a week that's 24 hours actually but we go for a week training every year and I of course keep up with that and my deputies also um, so you're the, see what else you're the current coroner right now how long have you been in that, office I've been 8 years and I was a deputy for Probably 16 years. So what would make you more uh, qualified than the, your opponent? What would make me qualified? More qualified. What makes you more qualified than... Um, uh, what's the my other guy? training. The training. My training. Yeah. There's a... Um, and I... Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Well, no, well, I guess uh, I have, it's it's a two-parter. I, I want to find out something about you, but I feel like all Conejos County probably wants to know what uh, what you guys are thinking about. So I was trying to get a forum um, organized in South Conejo School on Wednesday night. Oh, wow. Would um, you be interested? Is that too soon? Do you should, uh, uh, would you I, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be in Pueblo. On when is this coming Wednesday? Well, that that's what I'm shooting for. But uh, earlier, or sooner than later, I want to do it before November 1st because they're mailing the ballots out today. And uh, if we could uh, wait a week, you know, I think a week is okay. But I don't want to wait any longer than a week. Yeah, some of them are actually more than that. I mean, some of them have already been mailed out. I've already got mine. Uh, some of, them, quite a few of them, have been mailed out. But anyway, um, I'm going to be in, in 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 Pueblo. Wednesday and Thursday, so, man, I'm not sure, I don't, dang, I just don't know. Well, what about uh, next week? Well, I think, Monday. I think most of the people that's interested yeah. have heard both of us talk before. Oh, okay. uh, I ran against this guy, this is going to be my fourth time. <laughs> so you all been doing this for a while? Yeah, yeah, so uh, I was his deputy. I ran against him and beat him, and then uh, uh, I beat him, uh, no, no, this is my third time, this is my third time. I beat him twice, and then this is my third time, hopefully I beat him again, but, the, that, uh, I, got one. I mean, he has, he has some knowledge, absolutely, but as much as I have, and know, and I've worked under him as a deputy, and there's Oh, just things that we don't see. It's not a big deal, but we just don't see quite eye to eye. I mean, people are just different, you know. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but but we're just a little bit different on some of the things that we do and the calls that we make. Can you give me and a few I just, examples? I just like to make, pardon? Can you give me some examples of those differences? Because that's... I mean, that, no, that, I don't. Okay. I don't. That's yeah. That's it's really hard to say. And you know, you. I mean, you notice it at the time, but but you just you just seem to get it. No, that's fine. Uh, I there's only one really. 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. There's only uh, one kind of question that I only know that's related to the coroner. The the sheriff is usually the highest uh, law enforcement officer in the county, and the coroner can arrest the sheriff if they believe that they have something to do with a suspicious or if they were uh, involved in the death. Would you be willing to arrest the, a sheriff if you believed that they were involved in uh, in the death? Well, and, and what it is, is anything uh, involving the sheriff to be arrested for. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, it could be anything. Oh, okay. After any, anything. But whatever it is, the sheriff's got to be arrested for. The coroner's job is to do that. Absolutely, I'd arrest him in a minute. And he would arrest me in a minute. You know, I mean, it's, sure. we're both professional people, and yeah, absolutely. If he breaks the law, he's no better than anybody else. That's good. That's the. Uh, arrest him in a second. That's, I mean, that's the rule of law. Even if it's your own mother, essentially, if you're a public official, you're kind of bound by the law, right, to to institute justice. That's right. Exactly right. And that's and that's what I feel about uh, also calling. You know, making a death call. If I don't, if I am not positive what that person died from, yeah. they're going to go for autopsy. Sometimes we never, never, never find out exactly why they died but i'm going to do it all in my power to find out you know it's just well it, 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 they need to know i mean people need to know why did my loved one die right or what from or you know whatever so um and i would go to any expense to to try to prove what it is you know and i have well like i say 40 years in the ambulance so I've seen quite a lot of things there, and then uh, quite a few as coroner also, deputy coroner. Uh, so I've seen lots and lots of calls and a visit with, with doctors on people that are alive and deceased, you know, during autopsy or doing regular surgery or whatever it may be. Right. Uh, so I was very fortunate to be able to go into surgeries and stuff with some of our prior doctors that used to practice here and they're no longer even alive but but you know go into live surgeries and and have them explain what we're doing and what's what and what does what and it, you know it just well it just makes it where you can uh understand what's happening in anybody's case you know so anyway that's i guess my scope is Everything that I can do, I will do to find out the cause and manner of death, and everything I can do and will do to notify the next of kin, and everything I can do to stop any type of oh, public uh, blah blah about a case or whatever. Everything is kept confidential. Um, and I've heard that the other guy says that I don't keep things confidential. Well, he's, he's just, he's all you got to do is just show me one one instance, you know, because <laughs> yeah. we keep it confidential completely. It just it's just the way it is, and and well, that's just that's just the way it is. You, it has to be. There's you know, the people think just because you die, HIPAA is no longer involved, but it is involved always. So, and, and you don't want stuff told about you or your loved ones or anybody else if it's not a good thing, you know? Just right. Just leave it be. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be I guess, around uh, rumors, whatever, you know? I see it so, both. Yeah, I see it both ways. If, if anything happens to me, Mr. Mr. Richard Morton, my name's Jonathan Masters, okay? So I'm not a bad guy, and uh, I just feel like... Um, uh, tell everybody. Tell everybody what happened. Like, tell everybody. It, clearly, somebody got me. I didn't. I'm not suicide or anything. So, if something had happened to me, then it was an untimely death. And uh, my, uh, I'm giving you permission. So, I agree with the idea. You know that uh, people have a right to. It's it's really up to the deceased, right? Whether they want the information to be uh, available or not. So, I'm I'm telling you right now. Let anybody and everybody know, because I feel like the more people that know, the more possibility that the perpetrator, the 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 killer, will will be caught. Yes. If you know, if that ever weird situation ever comes up. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully it never comes up. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need any of that kind of stuff. 
I'll damn sure deal with it. Yeah, no, that's. I appreciate that. I gotta. I want to ask you about the forum thing still. The uh, Monday well, would Monday be if I was to get everybody else on board? And uh, would you want me to call you back on Monday or or I'll call you back for a Monday forum to see if you want to do that? Because you said you couldn't do it on Wednesday or Thursday. So I'm wondering maybe next week on Monday if you'd be um, uh, yeah, available. If, ever, if everybody can do it on Monday, I'd be available. All right. Good deal. I appreciate you giving a call. Is it all right if I give you a call? Um, if I ever think of any questions? Absolutely. Anytime you want. Excellent. Anytime Thank you. Anytime you have a question, day or night, just call. Excellent, Richard. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Have a good one. You're also. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.